Off the line right now is Eric and Brecken Miramon, the number 4215 out of Auburn, California with EM Motorsports. Yeah, Gary Easley has just moved a huge rock as he makes his way down through idle issues. This is what we're saying, the course is always changing. Oh, and look at this, Eric. takes a tumble. Oh, that's a big tumble. That's a huge Rolled and saved and rolled again. It's an awesome time for the throw. Our safety crew is coming in to make sure everything is okay. Well, it's been a month since King of the Hammers, and I've been meaning to come by and see you guys, and we've all been busy, it's been bad weather, but uh, here we are sitting in front of the race car, and it looks like it's still covered in dust, and uh, nothing's happened to it since you got home, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not yet, it's been raining like crazy. We, You know, you're gone for two weeks at Hammers, you come back, you gotta go back to work. Time, time is valuable. So, Eric Miramon, Breck Miramon, uh, father son uh what would you say a team here and uh we talked to you guys before the race we talked to you during the race um you guys had some issues down there that you overcame and uh didn't end up finishing the race right no we didn't well i think this is that time we kind of uh bring up some of that <laughs> exciting action that happened down there and kind of talk about it and figure out what happened so um Leading up to the race, you guys packed up all your all your stuff. Big group of guys got down to the lake bed and uh, got ready for qualifying. And uh, first off, who drove in qualifying? I did. Yes, you did, Eric. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was there any talk of you driving in qualifying? No, he wanted me to qualify. Basically. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, tell us what happened in qualifying, Eric. So we went. I went and pre-ran it a couple times by myself and had the course pretty dialed. The guy before us um, threw a giant boulder in the middle of the downhill section. And our whole thing was like, let's just qualify good because he was driving the race. I just want to get him somewhat of a decent spot in the race. It was sort of a stressful morning there because I was at qualifying during that day and I was talking to you and people kept getting hung up and then you were waiting in the car, waiting in the car, idling. It's like... You, you, a lot of things go through your head because you're yeah. just, you were sitting there for like an hour. Yeah, I think and we're sitting at the start gate for probably 15 minutes almost. Yeah, th as the first car yeah. because somebody was hung up in front of you. The two guys in front of us got hung up in that left line, and you actually came over to us, and I pre ran the left line, dialed every time. I was like, it's fast, it's good, I got it. And that morning, more cars were getting stuck in there winching. I was watching all the qualifying while you guys were getting yeah. set up. And I actually videoed the guy in front of you that did the right line and made it. Correct. And in your car, how it's set up without having to thrash on the car, I thought it was better for you guys to go right line. You do have to give up maybe two or three seconds, but you get hung up one time in that left line, you're giving up 30 yeah, seconds. Yeah, it was a safe bet. And so yeah. we pulled an audible based on your suggestion. We went... We went right line and nailed, nailed it. it. That nailed was kind it. of a stressful decision, though. That it was because you've never like been up. You, you, don't, you I don't didn't even know. It. You didn't know where to put your tire. You didn't know yeah. what it looks like. So all the panels on these walls are usually going around that pinch rock. It's always the driver's you, side you, panel. You come up and you <laughs> yeah. slam down on the yeah. driver's side. You never hit the driver's side though. No, nope, didn't touch it. You put that past your tire so far up the big boulder that it just rolled right around. Yeah, it was. It was a clean. It was a clean start. And we get up to the top. We start cruising and. It just started thrashing on the car and just getting it, and then we came over the hill and we got, the, actually we got the end cab of that. You guys were just setting down a good pace. Yeah, so. we were doing what we could, right? And Brecken, right before we took off, he's like, "Hey, watch that rock up there." He actually mentioned the rock, the one you hit, yeah. the the one I hit, but it, it had moved from once we were at the gate. The guy directly in front of us pushed that rock dead center into the trail, and. 
we came over and it was like, oh shit, I have no choice but well, to hit. What, what was happening on that uh, qualifying course when you were up on the ridge and driving around? I heard a rumor that maybe Breck was telling you to slow down a little bit, maybe check up. <laughs> One, one thing I, you know what you do is you have a co-driver so that co-driver can tell you, you know, maybe what you should be doing in the car. Was what? that was that happening up there? That maybe, actually maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> a little bit of uh, let's just make it. Yeah. Okay. It was his first time racing the race. We just wanted to get a qualifying spot, right? So yeah. You, so I just wanted to give him the car in a good qualifying spot, a decent qualifying spot. Because he was already planning on taking off yes. in the race. Yeah. Correct. So. And everything was going good until we hit that rock. And then that forced us into a roll. And at that point, I was a little like discombobbled. I got a little fucking throttle happy. Well, you did land back up on your wheels. I did. Like, Damn, we're on our wheels. Let's, let's well, keep going. We're we still land, racing. As soon as we land on our wheels, we were both like, the gate's right there. The gate's right there. So you both were thinking the same thing. Pipe it and get yeah. through My the whole gates. thing was get it through the gate. <laughs> yeah. Thank and at, at that point, you'd, it was sort of a slow rollover. You, you'd only taken a tire. And, yeah, and that, then it escalated really quick from well, there. I think that tire is kind of what bummed us too. Yeah, the it car, is. That's what pushed us into that second rock. Uh -huh. On the far right. It, like, it, it wouldn't car, make the turn the back. Turn. I gotcha. Yeah. And at that point, just get it through the gates. So we crashed, we, we tumbled. Got the gates. And Brad, yeah, did you? Yeah, I we went through the gates. I, I wish somebody had a straight on shot because I believe you might have been inverted. I think uh, we're upside down. The nose of the car went over the gate. Yeah. Yeah. Right? We were looking at the gate. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, actually, if you slow down that in cab, the craziest thing, a giant boulder went right between your shock hoops, didn't smash the hood. Oh, it did. We, we it flattened did. it back out. Oh, okay. <laughs> like that boulder couldn't have fit in the perfect spot when you guys right were flipping over. And then um, another testament, uh, was, I mean, it was a big testament to the car. I mean, you slammed on the roof mm -hmm. through the gates um, on some rocks. Yeah, the and, uh, passenger uh, side took. A direct hit on Breck's side, and yeah. something that you that you did when uh, you and Phil built this car is that you made sure the seats are sitting low, mm -hmm. so you have a lot of space between helmet and roof. Now, I've been in race cars where uh, at the end of the race, you know, my helmet has marks on it from the whole day, you know, hitting the the, the tubes, and the the tube above Breck's head was probably pushed in what six inches, yeah, and it never touched your helmet. No, it didn't. No, it did. Oh, it, it did. Cracked, it cracked it did. My Painted Ooh, I forgot that. It I remember his, seeing the helmet. And that, it cracked and that, his Jesse James. Yeah, weren't you West pissed that it's your Jesse James helmet? James helmet? <laughs> at what, time I wore that we're, We were in your pit and you are like, God damn it, Dad, you wrecked my helmet for Jesse James. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so, But you didn't get a concussion or, or anything. Both of you guys were okay. I think I had a bigger headache before the crash than after the crash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To be very honest, like that thing looked worse than it felt in the car. Yeah. It really did. And... uh when, when safety came over, like, are you guys okay? The only thing I kept asking, did we cross the gate? Did we cross the beam? Yes, we good. We have did that we on video. The gate? We have your and audio. he goes, yes, you crossed the gate. I said, we're fine. We're good. Get us over. You know, there's also some audio in that video right about that point that we're going to probably lose. <laughs> because yeah. uh, Breck was pretty angry. Yeah, he was. Yeah, uh, I mean, and, and you just wanted to have a car to go racing in, and obviously you were worried that you just destroyed everything. Right? He said, the car's total, Dad. You just totaled the car. And I said, don't worry, we'll fix it. We'll and, go racing. And guess what? The car yeah, got I'm fixed, fixed right? So they pulled you out of the way, um, set you off to the side. Within five minutes, your entire crew's coming out with a truck, a trailer. People are running around the thing. Um, I was there when, you know, you go, shit, let's see if it fires off. Um, and this might have been a small mistake that, you know, was made in the heat of the moment, just wanting to see how the car was. Ended up being a huge mistake. So there was, there, what, what happened? So we fired it off and all of a sudden, boom, oh, it's not going to fire. It's a dry sump motor, but it sat on its side long enough to where the right bank got full it, of oil. It had some oil in the cylinders. Yeah, and, and it, we believe it damaged the starter at that point and it just Well, I was outside the car. And it went clink, bang. Like yeah. I mean, it sounded like a rod breaking. I th I right. thought you yeah. hydro locked the motor. Totally. We all so, did. As soon as you got back to camp, pulled the plugs. You know, the crew turned it over, and even when it was turning over, the starter didn't quite 
seem right, but there was so much work to do on the car. And there's so much going on. That that kind of got put by the wayside, um, and the crew just went to work. I mean, yeah. it was what to, uh, that happened on Wednesday, mm -hmm. so it was two days of fixing the car. All yeah. day Thursday, all day Friday. Right? Dave let us come over to his shop and and just start grinding on the car. So not everybody knows that Dave lives down there right. and has a giant shop right just off of the lake bed. Um, and he told you guys, take the car to Whatever the shop, you need. and anything in my shop is your shop. Any metal, any tubing, welders, Pull parts whatever. off of his spec car, whatever we needed. And, uh, I mean, that's a big deal for Dave to just say, yeah. come on, get in the race, get the car together. You had a, a bad run of luck that day, and, you know, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, we did, too. Um, I mean, he opened his house to us. And it literally, it is his house. Yeah. Um, and, and meanwhile, he's out there trying to run, you know, this whole event, and you're in his, he wasn't even there because he's got to be mm -hmm. running the event. So... I stopped by out there for about an hour or two, and uh, there was no need for me to be there. I'll tell you that because you had um, uh, you had Blake uh, just kicking ass on the car. Yep, doing the um, half. Anthony and Wano. Anthony Wano, um, and those two guys were basically spearheading the whole thing. I mean, they were telling They're everybody the what to do. Together. They're the ones that got together, but everybody was there. Everybody was putting yep. in their time. Um, you know, except for the girls were, you know. Hey, they were drinking mimosas and having yeah, a good time. Yeah, they were hanging out. And a couple of your buddies were playing pool and watching TV, you know. <laughs> playing, playing the driving but, scene later. You know, it takes an army, right? It takes an army. It does. They all contribute Everybody something. Everybody put their hand in at some yeah, point. Yeah, so you guys spent probably, what, about five hours out at Dave's? Oh, no, it was all day. It was, it was all day. day. It was all day. So fix the car. And that was just to do the fact. That was just the tube work. That was the tube work. So you welded in a new tube above the passenger. Mm -hmm. Uh, a new crossbar in the center on, of you on guys. On the passenger. Yeah. And you actually help lift the driver's side main pillar as well. Yeah, portal power yeah. heated and stretched yeah. that up so you didn't have to replace that. Um, it just needed to make one more race, you know? Yeah, one more race. <laughs> I guarantee you it's going to stay like that for oh, a while. Oh, hell no. Yeah. I already ordered two. All, All right. the parts are ordered. It's getting top half. I, I can't live like that, Trevor. Yeah, your stuff is too nice. <laughs> I can't. Eric. I'd go for it. It's an old car, but I take yeah. care of it. <laughs> um, the, then the next day, uh, on Friday, you were super late to contingency. I saw you rolling a contingency right at the end of the day. and That's not normal of you, right? No, it's not. Usually and, we're like ready to just get it done so that we can focus on the and that was all day. the little stuff like uh straightening the panels yeah. you know getting the wiring metal, back together um, yeah there was there was just a handful of odds and ends that we had to button did you up. think that you guys were actually going to make it in race um after we left dave's yeah after we left Dave, but i mean he was pretty pessimistic you were very at angry yeah. at your father for the first at day first, yeah we yeah. had our moment. <laughs> you did it. You had a moment. Well, what did you tell me about you two being in the car? What was going to happen? We're either going to fight or hug. Yeah. And we did both. <laughs> yeah, we had a mixture. So uh, you still qualified pretty well. What number did you qualify in? Uh, we were off the line like 20th off the line, 20th row off the line. So like 41, I think. 41, yeah. so 20th row, yeah. which isn't bad. Yeah. You know? um, that's actually yeah. a good spot to be. And there was a ton of fast guys behind mm -hmm. you. I mean, yeah, a lot of people struggled in qualifying. Like it, it burned a lot of people. That was a tough qualifying. Course. It was. I'm actually really stoked that Dave put in something that hard. It kind of went back to like the OG days where you had Dude, to like bang back door. I mean, there was people that had the winch and everything. Yeah. You know? oh, yeah. So uh, I think that that was a great qualifying run. So um, Saturday morning, start of the 4400 race, father son, cars together. Um, I saw you guys on the starting line. You looked calm, collected ready to go out there and get it done. Um, none of us had any idea that there was going to be one little, you know, starter issue that was going to start to plague you. So um, you take off off the line, Breck's driving, yep. um, dad's co-driving, and you were wondering how he's going to do in the desert, but he's got the side-by-side -side experience. So uh, first off, how do you think he did? And then we'll see. What I, I think he did great. Like, and, and honestly, something else that happened during the prep of the car at Amherst during the repairs is uh, we killed the comms on the passenger side for some reason. Uh, so we had lap. no comms for so the first lap. Dude, so you don't have to listen to him. No. So you just it, was it, was it, it was a lot of this, that, and they're like this, you know? We kind of came up There's with like... There's a couple of these. There was, no. <laughs> there, there was four... There was four, There's four key, of there these? There was four key, like, you know, left, right, whoops, and then slow down. There was four key, like... 
Well, you're judged. bringing it back to the OG racing yeah. right there, right? And he shredded. Right. We didn't have to argue. We didn't have to talk. And honestly, I thought I was going to be a little nervous with him driving because it's a straight axle car in the desert. Well, when he you're was, with he your was banging, child. And he's banging 90 miles an hour out there. And I'm just like, I, I was way more calm than I thought I was going to be. In, uh, so you were telling me, too, that, you know, the Lorance picks up the high speed. Mm -hmm. So any race, you set go, you start tracking the race, it picks up your high speed. You, yeah, you, you pick guys up got, all your numbers. You guys got 92 miles an hour out of this yeah. thing, right? And so there were no dry lake beds. Like I've, I've been in the race and you know, we've come in, we had 116, right? Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? It's a dead flat. You could land yeah. an airplane on it, lake bed to go yeah, that fast. Absolutely. But in the section that you race, there's only that first lake bed over BJ Baldwin Hill, but it's a pretty sketchy lake bed and it's covered in dust. There's really only yeah. a single track through that. You're one. like picking your way through. Yeah, the so dust. you got 90 miles an hour through, you know, single track out towards the military base in a, in a solid axle car he was in an driving. IFS world, uh, first time driving it mm -hmm. and you not being able to talk to him on the radio. Yeah. And he shredded. He did great. So, I was halfway through the first lap. I was like, oh man, were, were you passing great. people? Yes. You were passing people. That's awesome. Was both getting passed and passed. Did, yeah, there was some back and well, forth. Who who was a guy that passed you that you recognized that went, holy crap, that guy's hauling ass? John Webb. <laughs> John <laughs> Webb. Webb, Webb ripped yeah. past you guys. Yeah, Webb was on a mission. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. I think one tire was touching the whole time. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> he's cruising. That's good. That's that's okay to get passed by. Yeah, Webb. yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's always cool. Yeah, <laughs> you're driving. You think yeah. it's cool that he blows by you? What about? Um, we were laughing about it. <laughs> Did you make any good passes out there that, of people you know? Um, I think some of the pre-running came down to a few passes, knowing our lines on the left oh, side. Oh, because you did yeah. pre-run yeah. the whole course because yeah. you brought your other buggy down to pre-run mm -hmm. it. You guys had been out there um, before the wreck, so you did get some pre-running. Oh, yeah, we got a lot of pre-running yeah. in this and, year. And so you had some sneaky little cutoffs where mm -hmm. you could pass yeah. people. We utilized um, our, our rules. Our what rules. would you say you, you passed probably how many people on that first lap? Sure. Two to three people. Yeah, yeah and then maybe got passed by two and we to got three. Passed, yeah. So you held your position, yeah. which yeah. is huge because you got in the back of that pack. You got twenty IFS cars. They're coming hot. That are just rippers in the desert, yeah. right? And so, did you have any trouble before you came into the pit after the first desert loop? No, no. Ripped Nothing. right in. It was clean. Yeah. And what'd you get in pit A? Did you get any parts or pieces? We took or? fuel and they fixed the comms. Okay. Uh, How yeah. long did that take? Then we had a. And so, in fixing the comms, we lost GPS. <laughs> wait, wait a second. <laughs> so you can talk to each other, but you no, no longer know where we're going. Why is it such a, a pattern that everyone I'm talking to at some point in the race does not have GPS? You know. Well, That's so. something we've always really focused on. When Chris was riding with me, he always yeah. had that so dialed right, and we just switched from lead nav back to Lorance. I think it's a superior. Lorance. navigation yeah. tool so I, I put one in night for the race and I think that's where we kind of I, I right. might have screwed up the comms a little bit but nevertheless pit one we took fuel and uh, Kevin who works for you yeah. went ahead and got us a whip so I could at least talk to him yeah but in that process we lost the GPS power right there's just a lot going on I think at the time oh my so Lord. we leave the short course we pull over the hill I was like dude we got to fix the GPS yeah like there's sections that there's little sections that you just don't pre-run because yes. they're just yeah yeah you know mm -hmm. you rely on the GPS is go faster. so that's where you were stopped fixing the GPS when you saw Brendan Thompson yes down correct here. correct yeah he okay. actually came up to us asking for water yeah and he and he's told us that um, well Eric doesn't run water in his engine and I'm like well what's he run piss you know and it's like <laughs> so what do you run in the engine that's kind of interesting uh, we run a mineral based oil it has a high uh, flashpoint to it so you never lose it like you can run this thing on lint mode and you'll never trip so it'll drop. go to 300 degrees and it won't it'll go to 450 over. degrees if it needs yeah. to that's cool so I you don't carry water i hadn't i didn't know a lot of people were using that so that's it's awesome cool. i like it i've so used you, it for six years and i've never had an issue so you pulled off fix the gps yeah pulled okay. off fix the gps and how long did that take that was like a 15 minute deal. And then the pit was probably pretty long too, 20 minutes. The uh, pit was only like 10, 15 minutes. Okay, that's minutes. not bad. So yeah. you're not that far behind. So no. you rip some desert and enter the rock trails. Yep. Uh, enter uh, Spooners. Okay, so how'd that go? It went fine. So you ripped up Spooners? Uh, you, we ripped down Spooners. Oh, that's right, down Spooners. And yeah. Breck was learning the pace in the rocks right there. We found yeah. some traffic and whatnot, and he was getting after it. And then um, up outer limits. Yeah. And how was it driving in the rocks with the big car? No problem. It was good. I could use more seat time. 
So in Outer Limits, there's really only one hard spot, that bottleneck, you know, with the the with yeah. the big wedge. Yeah, and on the lap one, you, you bypass that up out of it. You oh, know, really? Yeah, you go left up out of there towards pit two. Okay. So that's lap three where you actually hit the bottleneck. Oh, okay. So you rip right through there mm -hmm. then. And as we were coming into pit, we like hit like a G out and all of a sudden the car died. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what just happened? So we, we lost power. So fired right back up, started made a shit ton of noise right there. Mm -hmm. So and like, this was the beginning. Of yeah. The so I was like pit two, hey, we, we lost power, check for loose connections, which they found in pit. And they then found that pretty quick. They yeah. found that right away. Oh, was it a starter wire? A battery terminal. A battery it, terminal. It, it, again, it, yeah. it's probably a plague from the crash that we had. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. And uh, they went to change the starter, and the starter looked fine, so they put it back in. Um, so they took the starter out, looked at it. They took the starter it, out, looked at The teeth weren't missing or anything, so they just put it back in. And I think that was our downfall. Well, and I don't think that was anybody's fault. I. I I'm a no. true believer. Everyone was in the heat of the moment. The damage that starter happened when you were trying to start it when it was hydrolocked. Yeah. And you got so many other things you're thinking and trying to keep you going that sometimes things get overlooked. Yeah. So you got back in the car and went out on the course. Correct. And then we uh, headed over Big Johnson and started heading up uh, Claw. Yeah. And then we got to a bottleneck and, right there on that little spot. That, I don't, I've said this before, but that, that spot in Claw, I've actually seen you during the race in that spot in yeah. Claw. It's not a hard spot it's not but it's like the first two choice area in the first spot and everybody always hangs up in there yeah because they go right when you got to go super left well the left was jammed by um by another car yeah i won't say who yeah that ran out of freaking gas so so just so you're aware yoder talked to us about this because he, right, he, right? right he was there with you right and he me. goes we're in the claw and there's guys out of gas yeah like whether they're out of gas or vapor locking, but like, and I heard that you guys gave them gas. We, we, I, I told them you can have a two gallons max. So you took the I return our, off or something? Yeah, we just, we took the downline out of the tank off and, and fuel pumped it right into Because at this point, you're dead in the water. If they don't get out of your no, way, you can't We weren't going racing. anywhere. We had to give them gas to just get them to move. So I'll give you two gallons just to get you to the next pit. And they're putting it in an oil container? <laughs> a tranny court. A tranny court and <laughs> dumping it in. Did it yeah. work? Yeah, yeah. They finally got out of our way, and at that moment, we would start the car, and the starter really gave that's, a shit. That's what he said. Is yeah. like you got them out of the way, and you yeah. tried to start it, wouldn't go, and then he said he took off. After I like. That. I was like, Kevin, go. I gotta fix this thing, you know. And he's like, he gave me a couple words of wisdom, so I pulled the starter, turned the flywheel a little bit, and we got to start. We're like, boom, back on again. Yeah, and so then you're racing again, but it's like. Ups and downs. You're and like, that was racing, like, racing, racing, racing. That was almost dead. an hour of downtime right there. Again. An hour of pulling yeah. the starter, turning the flywheel. Oh, no, yeah, all that. And then pit was a long time as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we made it all the way to Jack Hammer with no issues. Mm -hmm. And Jack Hammer was a total trail plug. Yeah, and so it's we also funny. We stopped and pit again after we bring Cody parts. Oh, yeah, we did do that. Oh, you and Cody he, needed a power steering pump. Well, he thought he needed a power he steering pump. He thought, yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. So but at so, this point we had so much downtime we're like fuck we'll bring you parts Cody. So you, you pulled into pit when you didn't yeah. have to, brought him yeah. a power steering pump, and then yeah. you get to the bottom of Jack. Um, and it's funny because we talked to Yoder about this too, and he said it was just a cluster, mm -hmm. right? Um, and and I think you said Jordan Townsend was the one in there plugging the hole in Jack. Like a dirty tampon. And there's a rumor that that car might have been broken before he drove it that last couple hundred feet and just blocked the entire trip. Well, he put it in the wrong spot. <laughs> yeah, and there was no getting around that thing. No, right? no. Um, and he wasn't even near the car, was he? No, he hiked out for parts. So you show up, there's just a car, nobody in it, yeah. just sitting there, stuck, trail closed, right? Yep. And so at that point, um, people started getting makeshift trying to figure out ways around, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think Kevin was the first one in line at that point. And he just took this crazy right line. It's just giant boulder field, and it was like it was the only option. And, and it he, took he, him, he had to winch. Right? He had to winch for over half an hour just to get out of there. Yeah, everybody, it was. It was. A Were there other people show. up there helping him, or was there it just was, him? Yeah, no, there was guys out of the car. Because I like every, to see everyone, other co-driver people get out of the car and go help. Them. Okay, if you're going to try this line, we'll help you get up yeah. it, so then we can go next. Yeah. yeah, and everyone was totally working as a team up there. But then cars, we were there so long, cars started coming in. And 
I had to go through my same process again to start the car. Otherwise, we were gonna guys were trying to sneak around. Oh, they'll get past right? you, right? So, so you had to come back down and try and get. And, so then you just yeah. had to let it idle the whole time. Let's so see. we moved it one more time, mm -hmm. and then did it again, and then. Actually, no, we just moved it that one time, got in position, left him in the car, and it idled for 45 minutes before we could really get out of there. And, and eventually, so Yoder did that line. Mm -hmm. He hit his drive line. So people and then started. TMR guys, I think, hit that line after, and they were in there for another half an hour. Yeah. Like, and then. Toyotas. And a Toyota. It was a cluster. And then Townsend got something together. We saw him walking up, and yeah. I was like, oh. We're not. We're we're gonna go left and get. It. He's gonna get this thing out of the it's way. The last now. thing you want to do. This thing is so much wider and longer than yeah, like Yoda's car is a rock crawler. Yeah. Like, this thing is this so much. Huge. Yeah. So right then, you know. Right then, we were the first car past Townsend. Because like, he backed out of the way, or did yeah. he pull up it, or did he? Back no, he, he was able to get up and out of the way. Okay. Or no, he did come back. He, I think he pulled back. He ended up pulling back out. So that's the bottom of Jack. Yeah. You get through there, yeah. and you're clear. And you're you're rock crawling. Again. Yep. Yeah. And we're, and we're going. With a bad starter, and in multiple times, yeah, can't shut it off. Multiple times, you've been under the car, unbolting the starter, turning the flywheel, bolting Every it back. Time we Were you it doing off. it, or was your dad doing it the whole time? It was all him, pretty much. Yeah, all right. Well, you better you own. I put my it. hand in there. Actually, you don't own for that because it was possibly his fault that the starter was bad <laughs> to begin with. Okay. So, you, so you're, you're you're still on the we're cruising. You're on lap two on the first rock lap. Yeah. And where does it go south after that? Um, um, cut off. The cut off. So we Where come we down Spooners. Yeah. And we came down Go ahead. Fisher to, uh, what was that? We passed pit two. At this rate, it's dark. Yeah, that's yeah. an aftershock, isn't it? And then, oh, yeah, we're coming down aftershock. Yeah, so yeah. You, so you're, you're heading down aftershock, and at the bottom of aftershock. And we had about 20 minutes to get to pit. Yeah, and at the bottom of aftershock, it's just desert around back to yeah, the main it, camp. Yeah, totally right? doable. Yeah, and this is dark. And, and you're going, we still have a chance to make it on the last Absolutely, if, if, if we were cruising. Yep, and then what happened? Um, we came into a corner and the car stalled out. Well, usually the guy driving, and if yeah. you drive it- Let, Let's corner, be honest. <laughs> did you have to slam the brakes or something? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we were kind of in a rush at that point, right? Meet, meet the clock. Well, that's something with these uh, big LS engines with big fuel curves. Um, and tired halfway through the day, you know, and the uh, sometimes the injection system and the mass airflow it can't keep up, yeah. and so it's common that if you have to do a panic stop and slam on the brakes, they just die for a second. They can, right? they can, they can, and it did, and it did, right? And there's nothing wrong with the engine, nothing wrong with the car. It's just something no. that happens sometimes, yeah. and it's happened in race cars I've been in before. But then it's get out all over again. Get the branches out. At this point, it took over an hour and a half just to, of trying to get it started. Like we had worn out every tooth between the uh, flywheel and the starter. And, and at this point, the time of restarting lap three had was, expired yeah. because I think it That's was correct. six o'clock, right? Yeah, and we um, we would have made it if we didn't die, but we died and. But you're in aftershock. Literally, that's as far away from camp as you can get, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. For help or anybody in, in else or, or, or radios. <laughs> yeah. uh, basically, you're like 300 yards from the military base yeah. at that point. We had radios. We, had, we have good radios. Oh, that's good. And so we were so, able to get a hold of people. Were you freezing at that time? It was pretty cold. Yeah, and you're under the car just worse. And we were in a spot where... It was not a good spot. It was not a good spot. Somebody and, could hit you. Oh, yeah. It was like right around Very a blind and cars are just coming out of aftershock. Yeah. So they're on the gas in the wash right there. And yeah. we set up our little reflectors. I've never used them in my life. Oh, you I actually like, have? So them. they make you carry the reflectors. To, you, go through, and, you go through tech and you set them up. That's yeah, good. And we actually, I we actually understand had, uh, what they're used for. <laughs> we had recovery on the way. Yeah. And as soon as they pulled up and turned theirs off, the car started. Oh, man. <laughs> Two hours later. So... <laughs> This is the part that I like, and this is the part, you know, I mean, Yoder made it lap two, and he's done, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this, and, but he drove into camp, and you guys were out there stranded for an hour and a half in the dark. By now, it's 8.39 at night, right? Correct. And one last, and it fires. Yeah. Right? Engine fires. like, holy shit, we are driving this thing. Home, yeah, we're not right? towing it back yeah. from the furthest point in the race course. So you get in the race car. At that point, you got to go through all those big old whoops and all the way around the mountain to come back, right? Mm -hmm. And yep. so you, 
were able to salvage your day by driving it into camp. Because I, I really believe that if you were in the middle of a rock trail and had to be out there till two, three in the morning recovering, you know, this wouldn't be kind of this happy go lucky, uh, uh, you know, interview right here. No. Because it ruins you for a long time. It does. And, but being able to have such an up and down rough day, but at that last minute, get it started and drive it back to the pits and get out and go, shit, we made it, you know? Um, and even though you didn't officially finish two laps, you literally had dirt road from there to, to drive back out, you know, besides Turkey Claw. Um, I, I, I'll call that a, 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 road, I'll yeah. call that a, a two lap race, you yeah. know? Um, and you drove it back to camp. Um, so that means you got the energy and the drive to try and do it again, right? Yeah, that was his first shot. He needs redemption. Need redemption. We're yeah. gonna do it. And and your plan is to race King of Hammers next year in this car. Yeah. And will you be having your dad uh, drive the qualifying? Maybe, but I don't think I ride with him. <laughs> um, you know, when I talked to you down there at the Hammers, you brought up something, uh, or actually, uh, I think it was your sister that brought up something. Um, what exactly did your father do in qualifying two years ago? The same thing. You're looking at a two. Oh no. I oh. take that back. No, save it. You got it. Oh, oh. what a shame. Not as bad, but. <laughs> he did cartwheel it, didn't he? Yeah. He's yeah. got a bad record. We're going to have to dig up some footage of that one. We're going to edit that in, Eric. Right? <laughs> no, save it. No, save it. No, save it. So, because I think it goes well. I think this I think this happens when you race once a year, okay? <laughs> yeah, that, that's right. So you don't go out and race no, all the old We haven't raced a series yet. in the last three years or something. Yeah, so like, what I'd like to see is I'd like to see you rip this car at NorCal a couple times and then go down to the hammers and just take the time to lay down a good finishing race next year, Brack. Yeah, that's and, the plan. And I'm going to hold you to that. He you know. needs seat time in the car, and we're gonna go down before Thanksgiving, on Thanksgiving, come back, prep the car, and have it ready for hammers. Well, um, you know, always awesome to stop by your camp. Uh, I get fed every time I, <laughs> I stop by. It was chicken, it was pork chops, it was lasagna. You know, I may be forcing myself on your food a little bit. That's okay. Because if I'm hungry, I you know I, be the only I, one I, I, when I'm hungry, I know I gotta go to your place. You know, such a great tent to be in. You know, sharing it with Cody. Uh, you know, and having Casey uh, there, you know, in the tent as well. Um, so it, it's always a good time to see you guys down there and to see you here. Um, a lot of positivity, a lot of fun being had. And, and that's why we do it. And, and, you know, you guys do take it serious, but you are also um, having a good time. Yeah. And, and bring in the, the Brecken's buddies and his generation. They're kind of moving into where my buddies have yeah. kind of moved out, right? Just a bunch so, of kids in yeah. there. I go in there and there's a bunch of kids running around. But it's awesome because you know? they're all into racing and they all like to grind. They, they are. You know, yeah. they're, they're, they're pretty fresh at it, but they're doing it. So I have a clip of walking around the car and I think there was nine people working on it an hour after you wrecked. Yeah. You know, so um, that being said, um, I do believe this is a, a success story. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, get it's the car back first together. Hammers. Father and son racing, Brecken's first hammers. You will never forget this one, will you? No. Yeah. And uh, I can't wait to see what you do next year. So thanks yep. for letting me come see you guys. And uh, thanks, good Trevor. Luck. Thanks for all your help. No problem.